Well, what's going on, guys? And welcome. Welcome, your faces, to Mana Lords, a medieval strategy game featuring in depth city building with large scale tactical battles and complex economic and social simulations. I have been waiting for this game for many, many, many months. And the time has come. Big thanks to Hooded Horse for sending over a key. This is not a sponsored video. They are not paying me to promote this game. It's a game I have been looking forward to for some time. And I've been playing it on stream since the 12th of April. And oh boy, is it phenomenal. So without further ado, let's start a brand new game. And let's create our character. So we have a multiple uh, selection here. Uh, and I think I'm going to go with this guy, and I'm going to call him the exact same what I've been calling him, which is Bitsimus Spoonius, I think. And then we get to choose our crescent as well, our coat of arms. Uh, and I don't know what to kind of go with. Maybe I don't need to just go something simple and plain. Uh, or we might just go like with a sword in there. And then we can change to field B. And then we can change to like different patterns and all this kind of stuff. So, and I believe here we can load a custom textures and save coat of arms and all that kind of stuff as well. Um, but like I said, I have put around 20 hours into this game uh, since uh, Friday. And I've been having a blast with it. And I thought I'll bring it over to here on YouTube uh, for you guys to see also. Um, I don't know if it's going to be a full series. We'll just see how you guys respond to it. And if you guys want to see more, remember, you know, like the video, subscribe, and also leave a comment, even if it's just a bloody emoji. Uh, I think I'm just going to kind of go with uh, just maybe a back, maybe this. I think I might go with this. I don't want to spend too much time on this. Well, bits of a spoonius, and let's start a new game so we got the game set up so we have a couple of scenario templates here we have rise to prosperity we have restoring the peace and on the edge we can only see there is one map right now during the early access and more will be coming in the future we can change everything from our seasons here to our radar frequencies yes we do get random bandit camps and all this kind of stuff starting seasons starting supplies so we're just going to go straight with the default with the restoring the peace and our main objective is two territories in the north are claimed by an illegitimate baron whose castle is located off the map bandit camps reside in the other unclaimed regions build and expand at your own pace when ready challenge the baron for the northern territories victory conditions is conquer every region so we're going to go with that i'm just going to click begin and we're going to see where our starting settlers begin so here we are, and I do have to say straight off the bat, if you're a person who is a sucker for detail, you better believe this is going to be the game for you. So we can see right now, we are starting in the most southern region. I don't know what the name is that, Etch, Etch and How, I don't know. Um, but here is the Baron up here. Um, it is a very slow paced city builder. Um, obviously, we can change the speed up of that by changing the uh, default settings previously before launching the game and we are down here and right now we can see our little settler camp we can see our people and just so you're aware it doesn't track individual people then tracks uh, 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 it's uh, detects families so if we look up here we can see we have five unassigned families none of them are assigned to do some work right now they have no home or living spaces but we have 10 total population this is our approval rating. If we can keep this above 50%, we will then bring in new families. We also have our public order, our regional wealth, our livestock, which tracks our oxen, horses, and mules. And obviously our oxen can actually help us by moving timber and all that kind of good stuff. We have a number of months before the supplies run out, and then we have all of our stocks up here as well. This is is a little cool little feature here currently showing the surplus of goods that we have we can change this to total goods stored but if we have this this is our surplus of what we have extra on top of what is not already being consumed but we have a new message right here victory condition dominance build your own town your manor and when ready press claim towards regions owned by opponents 
Once a claim has been pressed, be ready for battle. I'll unite these lands under my rule. Beautiful. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to head down here and look at our construction. And we can see we have the typical logging camps, woodcutter's lodge, saw pits, forester huts, uh, hunting camp, and forager huts. We have multiple tabs here with multiple structures and industries and all this kind of stuff. But if we click on our name as well in the top center, we can go to our development tree where we can then spend points on additional buffs and obviously some stuff are work in progress due to it being early access uh, and just let you know this is not a review of the game it's not an official review or anything it's just a good old spoon playing the game that he's been excited for so we can also see policies and production i think what we're going to do as well is we can name our town but i'm going to leave that to you guys so i'll be reading the comments uh, and let me know and in the next video i would do of this i will name it with something that you guys suggest and which ones, if you want to vote on something that you like the name of, like that comment that somebody's put. So uh, we'll see what that becomes next. Then we have obviously the policies. So we can see we are currently tier one and we can wild animals are, are on rich, re, uh, re, uh, wild animals on rich deposits, breed, breed twice as fast. There's two breeds in there, uh, twice as fast as the cost of 50% reduction to yields from crops or a strict fasting. So we got production as well, which we can't see anything of right now. But we've got the settlers. This is our homeless people's tent. This is where they currently live in. And we can zoom in. We can have a look around. Obviously, I'm playing everything on maxed and all that kind of stuff. So um, we can have a good look around at our individual people. And the way the game works as well is every individual person will have a job tied to it, as you see, as you'll see. So first up, the first building we're going to need or uh, put down is our logging camp because we're going to need wood. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this down, let's say right here. Just to let you know, not everybody will spawn in this point, uh, this location. You could spawn over here. You could spawn in any of these regions whatsoever. And if we go into our, uh, down here, we can see our overlays. We can see our underground water where we can put some water wells. We can see our emma fertility, which is our wheat. We have flax, barley, and rye. And different regions have different fertility of um, uh, the fertility of the farming. I bloody lost my words there. Uh, so there's multiple areas. We can kind of see that walled brand here was, in fact, very fertile compared to some of the other regions. So this could be something we might have to push for before the good old baron over here tries to take it as well. Um, there is negotiations, there is bandits, there's raiders, and all that kind of good stuff. So now we've got this logging camp down, which is currently under construction. We're going to hit play. We've got a normal speed. And what we're going to see is all five of these families will start working on this construction because they're all working under the building tab. So when they have an assigned job, so when this logging camp gets built, that will then be an assigned job, which means we'll have four families building. So we have to keep an eye on our, you know, we need to make sure there's at least one family building at all times. So the next thing I want to look at putting down is we're going to want a woodcutter's lodge because this is going to create firewood. And we can just rotate and spin here. I'm just going to place that, let's say, around here. And then we're going to hit R and we can open up this road. So we can see here we have just a full spline and you can just see how it nicely snaps around already established objects like this. And we can just take this all the way around here and if we wanted to i can hold control and i can change the road curvatures as seen by the bar in the lower third of the screen and then i can place that there and then that creates this kind of curvature here so you can kind of create your own unique roads and all this beautiful stuff so what i want to do though is i want to bring the curvature all the way down i want to build a straight road just straight to that and that's just going to help with uh, logistics and moving a little bit quicker than what they are going to be doing on the ground there is full seasonal weathers and all that kind of stuff as well and if we highlight some of these we can see what is in each of these categories so we can see under the firewood we've got firewood and charcoal under wheat all that kind of stuff and once we do get some farming down we will be able to see our yields and how long until they start harvesting so we can speed up time here and wait for these to get built but what i want to also do we also have some storage left on the ground here so we have some supplies of bread we have some firewood, we have some stone, and some tools. I want to quickly get them into storage before any form of weather comes in, because that will then start affecting 
the supplies and we'll start losing some. So I want to go into storage uh, and I want to put down a storage house. And let's say uh, we're going to put you in this general location. I want to make sure there's enough room for a path to go along there, a rod. We're going to put you down there and then we're going to put a granary down at the side of it as well. Just like that. I'm going to build our road up here. We're just going to pass you through. And what we're going to do as well is we're going to make sure we're, we're not going to build on a grid base. We are going to build uh, naturally with the, you know, the terrain and all this kind of stuff. Because the game naturally forces you that way if you want to. Because when we go down to build houses, for example, which is a baggage plot, we can see we are then getting this little point. We're not getting a building to place like you would in any other uh, city builders. We actually go to a corner. We can take that along here. So because I'm taking it along this road, all the houses will face this road right here. I'm going to take that along there. And I can bring it along here. Let's say, let's, let's go here, for example. And I can go there. And you can see the shape of the houses will happen. So we can see... You know, these big red houses in the middle, that's where the primary house will be. But if you look at the middle one, that is giving us a little bit of like a little workshop. And what that workshop means is that house can actually build a little store on the back of it, like chickens or goats uh, and all that kind of good stuff. So that will help production within the town, because when we upgrade houses later on, we will then get uh, blacksmiths and tailors and breweries and all that kind of good stuff. So right now, we've got these being built. We want to keep, you know, everyone is working on these. We have these two buildings here. So as you can see, we have five people that's on assigned to a job. We're going to go into the logging camp, and we're going to assign the family, which now means we've got four building families and one assigned working. And then we're going to go into this one, and then we're going to assign you. And we have a new message. I heard, heard of your renown. I only seek to defend my rights and my honor against those who would wrong me. I hope you will not judge me by my rumours and slanders that some may spread about me. Signed and sealed by my own seal, Hildebolt von Unut. I'm sorry if I did that. But we're going to write back to him. You have no rightful claim to sell bits and Hofstein Stetten. So we're going to grab that, put that paragraph in there, lick it, send it, ship it. You know? Now we've just sent a letter to him. We've also got some indications up here, like exposed goods. We need to get a pantry built. We need to get a storage, which we're currently doing here. We've kind of preempted that. And we also need five houses being built because we have five families. So I think what I'm going to look at doing um, for these five houses, I also want to get some food up and running here. So let's have a look in here. We've got a meat. Uh, we have berries very close here. Our hunting area is over here. So let's get some berries down. I think first, and we're going to throw you, let's just stick you right next to us. We're going to get ourselves a rod. We're going to take you along there. And I'm just going to kind of swing this a little bit this way, just like that. And then I'm going to, I think, take a straight line straight across here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to get some houses being built. So we're going to the residential, and then we're going to, Build some houses just like this and go up here. But I don't think I want to be able to do this just yet because I don't have any uh, wood. And now we can see it starts attaching to these and different shapes, forms. So if you wanted to micromanage what you're doing, you just take this and just make it a little bit smaller. And if you want the end corner to be a little bit bigger, you can make different size houses to how you want your village to look. So right now, we're just waiting on the logging camp. We have a family currently working in there, but we do need more timber coming in. So what we're going to do is we're just going to speed up time, and we're going to wait for some of these logs to arrive. Okay, so right now we currently have about six timber and we can see this oxen here as well. In like most, you know, uh, colony builders, you will see, you know, the, each resident pick up the logs. But that is not a job for our humans. Our oxen is actually going to do that. He's going to go and grab this log here. He's going to hook it up and then they'll drag that one log to our location. So they're the ones that are going to be taking our planks 
from the logging camp to any buildings that need building. And speaking of buildings, we are now going to put down a few little residential buildings. So I'm just going to take this up a tiny bit. Actually, I want to take it along here. I'm just going to make these, but I want to make sure they've got a little, they've got a workshop in the back garden as well. So we're going to take them a, bit, a little bit further than need be. And we're going to take them to about, let's say, there. And we're going to click build. That is now going to build them three houses. So we, obviously we have three families. I want to bring in the supplies that's over here that we don't want to get destroyed. And we're just going to assign some workers to these storage buildings right here. The next thing I'm going to look at doing is I want to build a road. So I'm just going to take that across here like so. And then we have this nice little square. But if we go into our construction menu, we have something called a marketplace. And this provides a space for the assigned families to set up their stalls and distribute their produce to the burgage plots. A healthy supply and demand ratio of goods is needed for to fulfill residential requirements and keep the approval high. So what we're going to do is we can just place this in one corner, place it in another, and then we're going to just follow this all the way around here. And now we can see them little stories that's appearing on the grass right there. And that is where each individual market stall from a residential um, player, or AI, is going to be making a little stall. So if this resident is going to be working in the granary, they might want to sell food. If they are like this woman right here, I think she's going to place a store. She is. She's placing down a store. And it's a food stall. That's more than likely because she works uh, within the granary and she's put the bread that was over here into there. But what we do need to do is we need to get somebody to work in the forager hut. So once this food and this storage here has been put inside these storehouse and granaries, we're then going to want to unassign um, the jobs here. Because we right now we only have five families and we have more jobs than we have families. Because we have one, two, three, four, five. Which means we'll have nobody building anything for future builds. And for us to gain additional families, we need more than five houses. And because we have five families they're going to take up five and we also need our approval rating above 50 to bring in new families so right now we're just going to be juggling families around jobs uh so that is what we're going to do for now um we also want to keep an eye on our wood we've got two more timber we have 10 stone and 10 tools uh our first house is being built right now and uh let's have a little bit of a speed up and watch them build it There we go. Our first house is officially built, which now means we have a resident that has moved in and we can now see the requirements for this building to level up right here. So we can see that we need the amenities. So we need water access and a church to actually level up this building. And we can see the market supply, which is a fuel stall supply, food stall supply, clothing stall supply. And here's our uh, 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 armaments down here. And if we look in this, we can see a construction and backyard extension. And because when we built this, there was a little hut up here with a little hammer in it, which means this house can actually create a vegetable garden, it can create a chicken coop, or it can create a goat shed. So what I'm going to do right now, we do have berries coming in for food. We could possibly go for eggs, but each of these are going to cost us 25 gold, which right now we only have 50, our regional wealth. So we can put two of these houses that we put down here uh, with these. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put down a uh, two goats uh, buildings. So they'll start giving us hide so we can start making some clothes uh, and all that kind of good stuff. We will need a tanning station. So if we go into the industry down here, uh, we can then see uh, right here, tannery. Uh, so we'll turn hides into leather. And that will cost us four lumber. But right now, all we really need to focus on is bringing in more lumber and making sure these people have somewhere to live. And we have an additional few more houses. Uh, so I'm thinking about going maybe around 10 houses 
I don't know the location of where we're going to put them yet, but I think I'm going to put five here, maybe a couple down this area, and kind of make this kind of like the uh, central square of the town. And probably we'll end up moving this logging camp and woodcutters further back at some point. Um, and because right now we are chopping away at the wood. We have no way of replanting trees, but we can actually put down a forester's hut if we want to in the future, which will then start regrowing trees around this building. Um, and yeah, right now we're just going to speed up and we're just going to hopefully get all these done, get some people housed and start looking into some more residential spots. Okay, so like I said, I'm going to turn this one into a goat shed. And I'm going to turn this one into a goat shed as well. This is a passive. They don't, you know, take up a job. This this doesn't count as a job. However, if we actually go into the constructor backyard extension, we can see there is other jobs here. And these ones over here will actually make them and turn them into artisans. And doing so, if one of them was to, like a family that lived at this house was working at the logging camp, they will actually lose their logging camp job because this will then become their full-time job, which is working as an armory. We can see there um, we have uh, we don't have enough wealth and converts all inhabitants to artisans, locking them from being assigned to other jobs. So you can't make sure you just go in, upgrade, 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 because you'll find out that everyone will get an unassigned job and uh, we're going we're to have zero builders. And you always need, like I said, just one builder building away. Right, so we do have another stall, and it does seem we have a firewood stall now. So if we look at these houses, we can see a firewood stall supply, a fuel stall, uh, which is good. We just need a couple more food stalls. The co clothing stall it will happen once we get um, some tanneries up. Uh, right now, we're currently sat in April, which means uh, we are in spring, which we're getting frequent raining. Seasonal deposits regrow, meaning uh, the berries... Uh, the food and any trees or anything like that grows. Uh, and then if we look into June and August, uh, crops will grow and possibly droughts. And then in autumn, uh, we need to we can harvest, we can then plow the fields and sowing crops. Then in winter, seasonal resources are gone, firewood consumption doubled, and a lack of firewood might cause freezing and sheep shearing is forbidden also. What I do want to do, which I have I have missed off, if we're going to residential, I do need to put down a water location uh, because I didn't put one down. So uh, what I'm going to do is I think I'm just going to kind of place it maybe behind this shed right here. And then I'm going to place down a nice little cheeky road right there. Um, I, like I said, I don't want to make the buildings blocky. I don't want to make it like I'm playing City Skylines or something. But I want to kind of make the roads windy. I want to make sure things are following the roads. And things look a bit more... Um, I say realistic. We do have a iron deposit over here. Which is a rich deposit. Which is pretty good to have. Which means we can start mining iron. Start making some you know, helmets and all that kind of good stuff. Spears, swords. Um, the way we'll have to get that though. We have to make sure we get a level 2 house. And make sure we make a blacksmith. Um... Enables the production of tools, spears, swords, sidearms, and all that kind of stuff. So we'll definitely get one of them up. Because in the armory, uh, the army down here, we can actually create some units. Uh, and right now, we don't have any in here. We have six recruits, but we have no weapons. So that will come on a later date. So hopefully, fingers crossed, we don't get attacked. But if I'm not mistaken, we won't get attacked for the first two years... Um, due to just the gameplay settings that was assigned when we first started this save. All right, so what I'm doing right now is I've made the lands a little bit bigger than what these ones are. And we can see we get like a little house here. And we get a small house here with a workspace in the back, which means we've got a large land with an additional home on this property. And I've done the same with this one right here. So once these get built, we will then possibly have room for another family or we have some for uh, access to be you know made so right now we have three living spaces but two will be getting added once they get built so let's speed up time let's get these houses built and then let's see what we can do with these additional little house spots on the left hand side of the property let's 
straighten this up. Another beam coming up. All right, so we can see now we have the house here, but we also have this little little shed that somebody can sleep in. And if we actually click expand the living space right here, we can then turn this into a little shelter for an additional family to come in. Because right now we can see plus one, and we can go over here, and we'll be able to do that with this one also. So they will end up doing that, and this will then little turn the little shed into... A little uh, living space. I'm going to do the same for this one as well. I think what I'm going to do as well with these large areas here that they have at the uh, the back side of this house, I think I would like to make these possibly the blacksmith, and I might turn this one here into a little farmland. Oh, we're running out of food, which is a little cheeky warning right there. Uh, here we go. This land is now done, and we've got a settlement level increase. Hell yeah! If we go up here now and go back into development, we can actually unlock something. Um, I'm just debating on what do we want to go for because we have foreign supplies. We also have trade logistics. We have basic armor making, which enables blacksmiths to cramp, uh, craft helmets. We also have beekeeping, where workers collect honey in every region can uh, uh, sustain up to two apiaries by default. Uh, placing more will not increase the yields. We can increase the berry deposits, uh, which I might do, actually, because our main food source is berries. Um, we can also bring in some sheep breeding and heavy plows for some farmland, and this enables employing oxen at the farmhouse for significantly faster plowing of larger fields, as well as bringing crops back to the storage more efficiently. So I think right now I'm just going to go with the berry deposit. And we do need to look at getting food also. Now that we've extended these houses here as well, we've got an additional house on each plot, which means we've got seven living spaces in total, with a total of five families. So hopefully, once once this gets above 50, we'll then start bringing in some new families. But we've also got a new, red, uh, new message. Uh, armament delivery. Strong militia is paramount to the survival of any settlement. Luckily, a shipment of weapons has just arrived. And you will now be able to create your first militia banners to serve you and protect your people. However, we will need more weapons to equip all the people as the settlement grows, either by making them or importing them from other lands. Let's form a militia. So now we're going to do that. And if we actually look into our army, we've now been given 20 spears, 20 large shields, and uh, we've got a few little things. So we can actually make a little new militia here, with this is the spear militia which we're going to do, and we can see we have nine uh, units in here. That's because, obviously, we have nine recruits. Uh, what we do have to remember is if I click on this and I click Rally, I will rally them people to this location, which means whatever job they are assigned to do, they will stop doing uh, at the cost of going to war or going to battle. So we have to make sure we have enough supplies for the people that's already in the town, like the women and the children, to make sure that they are uh, you, uh, supplied and ready for what's to come because uh, I believe it is all the men that will be going to, to fight because that's what it was back in the medieval days. Um, and we can also recruit uh, mercenaries here also as well, which can bring in some light infantry units, some bowmen, some brigands, and a lot of other stuff, but at the cost of 90 uh, cost per each month. So... Right now, we do need to look into more food. So I'm just thinking if we do look into getting the wild animals up here. So let's go and get uh, some meat. We don't want to put it in the in the area because, as you can see, it overlaps the animal habitat, will cause migration, which we don't want to happen. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're just going to place you down here. We're just going to get ourselves a cheeky little rod. We're going to take that up. I'm just going to take that into that location right there so now we have a little pathway that goes through this forest uh, and we do have somebody oh we don't have anybody on berries whoops whoopsies right well let's remove uh, you guys from here for now because we do need builders and we do need to focus on the food over there I, because I have removed somebody from there, because if we look at this granary, we can see right here there's a little store, and that's because they work here. 
So if I was to remove these from this job, this family owns a market stall. If you were unassign them, the market will have to be taken uh, over by someone else. So uh, doing so obviously can have repercussions. Uh, and what I want to do as well, we do have zero regional wealth, so I can't put the farm down here, which, which is what I wanted. And I might make this maybe a chicken coop so we can start getting some eggs. So we have people working on berries now, which hopefully that will go up sooner. We have already got four berries. We have two bread left. And uh, the hunting camp is ready as well. So we'll start hunting now. It is May. Um, and there is 20 animals. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to hunting limits. I'm going to bring this down to five. So they will capture 15 animals and leave five for potential breeding when it comes to the seasonal event. Which I'm pretty sure is in spring, which will be a year from now. Because we're in May. And we're about to go into summer. I think what I'm going to do also is I'm going to get the hitching post here. I'm going to move this because this is where our oxen sits. He likes to sit down here and this is where he lives. Obviously, we don't have any... Uh... Oh, click on that. No. There we go. Uh... Where's the oxen thing? I'm pretty sure you can assign a family to this. Unless it's when I level up. Anyway, let's speed up and let's get that. Oh, it's because I've moved it from here. That's why. It's because I've moved it. Once it comes up here in a minute, once it gets built, we'll then see uh, assigned families here towards this. It confused me, but because that technically destroyed it, so it was showing the storage what's there instead. And there we go. As you can see now, the hitching post is now done, and we have a stable space for one, and we can add in some uh, families here. And we can also look at upgrading, uh, ordering another ox, and then bringing in a horse as well. And then we've also got the livestock here, which we have... He's just currently just currently chilling and waiting. Uh, and when we upgrade this, we'll get a, get a nice little shelter above it and all that kind of good stuff. Uh, and I love how the world starts to develop and all this kind of good stuff as well. So uh, we need to look into maybe um, getting some planks soon. So we have the hunting camp. We have people working there now. Our food is rapidly going up because of the berries. Um... And we, it is growing. We have 77 left. Um, but obviously when it comes to autumn, this will start decaying. And winter, it will stop growing altogether until spring. Right, so I've just had some resources stolen by nearby bandits. And they just took 13 hide from us. So if we zoom out to the map, we should be able to see a tent else somewhere on the map. Which there will be one somewhere. Either I'm just being blind. There it is. So we can see some brigands over here. This is a bandit camp. So we can actually send units from our village here, which you can kind of see the little, you know, the, the buildings here. And we can send the units over there to raid this and, you know, try to retrieve anything. I don't, I'm pretty sure they don't retrieve anything, but get our revenge on the bandits that's just um, stole from us. Otherwise, it's just going to be constantly passive, uh, stealing and theft from them uh, but right now we're in good approval we have a good market food variety because we've got the food and berries in there now uh, the homelessness will eventually go because it's a previous negative that we have uh, but hopefully we can bring in some more families so we can help out and bring up uh, speed up some productions uh, and i'm pretty sure at the end of the month is when a new family could possibly come in but we're in summer so there might be a drought at some point we'll see and we need to look at getting a church also, which a church needs planks. What's our wood right now? We have 25 timber. I'm just thinking if we actually bring in a plank. Um, just so we can get the church up. So we can actually upgrade these houses a little bit. Maybe we do that. I am going to do that. So let's place the logging camp down there. Let's get that built. And when the new family comes in, we can assign them to the saw pit start making planks for our little village. Okay, so let's assign a person now because we don't need anything building. Let's assign somebody there, but let's make sure that we have a log reserve of, let's say, 10, which means we won't go below 10 on the timber. So if we need anything building, 
and it, it's going to take us below 10 timber it won't allow to use that because we're reserving it for the saw pit which, uh, which is pretty cool i kind of like that we've also just received a new family i just thought i missed that yeah family members joined one of the settlers but they've just moved in we now have six families um so what i'm going to do is i'm going to bring the food back to the granary because we've just removed a person from it to actually assign it to the hunter spot over here and then if we get another family um we will then leave them as builders because i will need to make some more living spaces which i might quickly do now since we have the lumber uh, so we are ready for them and i think i might just go straight here you know uh I don't know actually because that's a small gap if i was to bring this road along here let's say wrap it around this lumber mill like so i could then take that over there um what would the houses look like if i was to put them in there like this Wait, it'd be easier for me to start it that way and take it that way, that way. Boom, boom, boom. Yes, yeah, so you can see I can bring in the people, but they won't have a job in the in the garden, which is not a big deal. Um, but it'll save us a little bit of space here for the center of town, I guess. Or if I wanted to, I could maybe make a bigger house for this corner, you know? But I feel like right now we can't afford to do that sort of stuff that's a lot of space because we can't be picky until later on once we've got workers so let's speed up time I and mean, that means now with this is starting to now be a little bit of a a street wait i've just lost oh i, I assigned them what did i assign them to Wait, what did I assign them to? We have got logs. How many? We've got 20 planks right now. So let's remove you from there. Let's get you back on uh, building. Because we have got a little bit of decent planks. And then I think I'm going to look into building the church as well. Because that only needs 20, 20 planks. Oh, but we need stone. We need stone also. So we are about to go up to uh, 12 houses. And I'm going to preemptively put down a mine for the stone over here, which is not a large spot, you know. It's only a small little little area. And we're going to grab you. I'm just going to take you this way. Let's put some curvature on that a bit. And we'll take you straight to there, just like that. Come on. I think I'm going to bring this down here as well. I'm going to take you over there. Oh, not that way. And take you and connect you to that. There we go. So we have a little bit of room back here for to add something. I don't know what yet, but something will come to us. So the additional families now come in. Um, I think what I would like to do is we can't upgrade these houses yet because we need the church so let's look at putting down the church uh which was in you and in you and we could put this maybe we put the church over here yeah let's do that let's put the church over here in this little big empty spot we have so i don't think we have any fertility we could put a farm here on this windy road and maybe in here but that's going to remove the berries so i think we have a little spot over here for a farm and we can connect this road up to this here and we could do a farm here a farm over here what about barley we've got nowhere except look at all of this farmland right here look at all the ones he's got as well he's got farmland we can actually see his town until we actually go over there so I'm just going to set the priority of the Stonecutter camp to its highest. So they'll focus on building this. Because I need to assign a family to this to start gaining some stone. Because if we look at the wooden church, we need 10 stone for it to actually get built. And then once we've got that, 
I can then stop the workers on here and micromanage them a little bit more. But we have just gained a new family. So we now have two more. So we can actually leave them as a permanent job, to be honest. Saying that, we don't have anybody in the stone cutters. So I could add them there right now because we do have four more vacancies um, available. So we should be able to cover everybody for jobs. We will have to assign somebody for the church. But hopefully so far you're enjoying the, you know, the start of the, the town. This is going to be like the slow phase, the build up, the micromanaging of your first little settlement until we actually start getting into the nitty gritty stuff of just expanding a little bit more quicker, micromanaging farms, and then start bringing our units uh, and trading from district to district and maybe outside districts because we can see a trade point right there and there is some work in progress as well. Uh, the generic storage is full. That's the saw pit, right? Actually, it might have just been moved. We do need somebody to work on the storehouse. We have firewood in there. And I would like to grow this market a little bit quicker as well. But our approval rate is going pretty decent right now. Going pretty decent. I'm just looking. Have we got anything that we are making? We are making quite a bit of hide. We could put down, if we wanted to, a trade post and start selling our hide. But I would like to upgrade. No, we're going to wait for this church to build. Because it means we can turn one of these spots into a tailor workshop. Enables the production of claws, um, cloaks and um, cambersons. Converts all inhabitants to artisans. But we will need five gold for that. So maybe... We have got 15 units now. Maybe we take them up to the brigands' outlaw camp to take them out to scavenge to see what they have, which I might do. So let's click on the unit. Let's grab our units right here. We've now assigned them. So all of our uh, people will then start, you know, start move to that location. And then this is where we then have some uh, real-time strategy um, tactics. So we can highlight our units. We can then put them in a formation. Um, well, they said we can line them where we kind of want them up. We can change the regression to give ground, missile alert, balance, stand your ground, push forward. We can disband the unit. You can only do that once you're in the province you own. And they'll go back to their normal day lives. Uh, and we can also make them run because they do have stamina, fatigue, cohesion, all that kind of stuff. They are getting a plus morale, and we can see they have an effectiveness as well. So we're going to get these. We're going to make them walk, and we're going to march them to, let's say, this location right here. Because if when we get close enough, they will then detect us and see us, see us and start coming towards us, and we'll have a little bit of a battleground. So we're going to speed up time. And we'll be able to see our units moving. We can see our effectiveness going down and our fatigue and stamina... Um, going down a lot slower than what it would be if they was to run because the terrain does affect how that happens. Uh, just like it would do so, you know, arches on the higher ground, if they're moving or fighting uphill, they're going to have less effectiveness. If they're fighting downhill, it's going to be better and all that kind of good stuff. So we're going to keep an eye on these here. We can't see them right now where the units are. We just know where there is a camp because there is a fog of war. You just can't see it. I'm pretty sure they're going to be coming towards us any second. We have arrived at our destination. So I'm going to move a little bit closer. And I don't see them as of yet. I would like to get line of sight of them if possible. They're still there. We can see them now. So let's speed up time here. Oh, they're moving now. So we are ready. We have a little line. Obviously, we can make more units and all that good stuff, but let's turn turn to them. They have shields. Their effectiveness is 94%. I always 105 because we're obviously stationary right now. We are ready. I'm going to make sure that we set them to push forward. So we want to push them back with our shields. We're going to set them to make sure they run. They are coming and charging at us. 
Their effectiveness is 989, so let's attack. health right now we are 15 they are 90 stand your ground speed up time they are losing units they're on 10 units now a couple of dead bodies we are out outnumbering them and we are won the fight beautiful Let's take our units now to this bandit camp. And then we should get a message. There we go. While searching through the enemy belongings, you find a stash of goods. They could be to send your people who surely need them, uh, uh, though it is your right to keep it. Send resources to the nearest town, or this belongs to my treasury now. So what we're going to do, we're going to send that to the nearest town, and then we're going to get these units... And we're going to get them to come back to the village. We're going to get them to run. Uh, and also now we can see we have 374 gold. And we've just gained 320 influence on that region. Well, that, uh, as our lord. Because if we zoom out. Oh, let me bring you over here. Uh, if we zoom out, click on this region. We can see down here we can claim with influence or claim with king's favor. And it's 1,000 influence, so we kind of need to do around three to four battles, depending on what's going on. Uh, they are coming this way, right? Yeah, they are. So they're going to be heading back, and once they get back, we can then disband them, and they'll go back to their daily lives. But right now, a lot of this is um, not running as efficient, just because obviously we're missing people from the town. Uh, they might have been assigned at a marketplace. They might have been assigned, you know, elsewhere. Oh, the church is up nice we do have two families so let's assign somebody to the church which means we need a clothing stall that is what we're missing right now we need linen leather or yarn so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go into construction i'm going to go into industry and i'm going to put down a tannery i'm going to put that into this location put it right here and in doing so that will then give us leather so then we'll start making clothing stalls here and then we can turn one of these uh, burgage spots into a, you know, a tailor's workshop. We do have the gold for that now, however. Uh, and I'm pretty sure um, I might turn this one here into a farmland. So let's get some vegetable gardens. And we can see that backyard has now been turned into that. And she's going to start plowing and sowing and all that kind of good stuff. So that's pretty cool. Our people are now back. Let's disband them so they'll go back to their normal day jobs. And now we'll have a little bit of better efficiency throughout our village. So I think what we're going to do for now, we are going to leave this video hit right here. So check out my other content right here. And let me know if you watch this all the way to the end. And uh, let me know your thoughts on the game so far. And if you are interested in buying it, remember it comes out on April 26. So uh, again, thank you so much for watching. Like I said, check out my other content right here. Keep smiling and I'll see you in the next video.